Hello, my name is Darius Villa, the Director of Research, and on today's episode of the Benefits of High Speed Rail, we will talk about which type of transportation gets you to your destination first, the plane or the high speed train? Well, obviously, the plane goes at an average speed of 575 miles an hour, which might seem fast compared to the high speed train's average speed of only 150 miles an hour. But in reality, it might be easier to just hop on and hop off the train. While on a commercial airline, you get many roadblocks that add time. Let's say Johnny is going on a flight from Washington to New York, a distance of 224 miles, the same distance between Miami and Disney World. And Timmy takes the high-speed rail. Let's see who gets to the Big Apple first. Johnny arrived at the Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C., but he has to wait 90 minutes for the pre-flight arrival. Then he has to clear the TSA inspections for 15 minutes. The de-icing time for the plane that Johnny is about to take takes 20 minutes. And on top of that, the plane has a mandatory 30-minute pre-flight inspection check. Normally, after that amount of time, it will be time for Johnny to board the plane so it could take off. Oftentimes, and most of the times, that is not really the case. The average delay time for an airliner is one hour. Johnny has to wait another hour on average before the delay will be done. Even then, it won't end there. There are many things in the sky and on tarmac that could cause delays, often to increase the time even longer. For example, the day before yesterday, snowy weather and very cold air hit the northeast region, canceling 215 flights and delaying 320 more, including Johnny's. That means there will be, for example, another four hours more on top of the delays Johnny has to wait for. And there is a chance that a delay of nearly a week that sickened a Virginia family from airport food could also hit Johnny and really mess up his time. So let's do the math and see how long Johnny has to wait before Johnny finally reaches New York or even boards the plane while still in Washington DC. Let's see the calculations. Flight time at cruising speed and altitude, one hour and five minutes. Take off from the tarmac to cruising speed and altitude, 30 minutes. Plus, plus landing from cruising speed and altitude, 30 minutes. So that makes it another, an extra hour. Pre-flight arrival time, one hour and 30 minutes. De-icing, 20 minutes. TSA inspection, 15 minutes. Pre-flight inspection, 30 minutes. Delay time, one hour. Winter storm delay, nine hours, which now you have to sleep overnight. Good night, Johnny. Time it takes Johnny to get from Washington DC to New York by plane, 14 hours and 45 minutes, and a long but agonizing night of sleep. All for just a one hour flight. Meanwhile, Timmy is less stressed by boarding the high-speed rail line that goes from Washington DC to New York that takes, let's say, an hour and a half at average speed non-stop. Timmy has very little hurdles on this type of transportation compared to Johnny. Timmy only has to check in his baggage and his ticket, which takes only 15 minutes, but that's about it. The only stop on the way is Philadelphia, which takes five minutes. Let's see how many hurdles Timmy awaits for Timmy and high-speed rail. Check-in time, 15 minutes. Total stopping time, there's only one stop in Philadelphia, five minutes. High-speed rail travel time, one hour and 30 minutes. And I'm not talking about the Acela that only averages 78 miles an hour. Total travel time for Timmy on the real high-speed rail is one hour and 50 minutes. So while Timmy enjoys a quick relaxed travel time, Johnny gets himself 
in an unexpectedly long, complex, and very frustrating time travel for such a short flight. And when you look at the big time difference, you would see that by the time Timmy has reached the Big Apple, Johnny would be still sitting with stress at the Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C. If Timmy wanted a joy ride with high-speed rail from Washington, D.C. To, to New York and back, if he started the trip by the time Johnny entered the airport, by the time Timmy got back to Washington, D.C., Johnny would still be in Dulles Airport, having gone nowhere! And Timmy could take the same high-speed rail round trip two times more. In total, Timmy could take the trip round trip three times in total before Johnny would finally board the plane for New York at Dulles Airport. So think about how much stress and anxiety you would have to go through all these unnerving steps that take a long time to go on such a a, on such a short flight versus a short trip by high speed rail. If you enjoy this video and if you want to receive weekly updates from High Speed Rail America Club, please subscribe to our channel. If we reach 100 subscribers by Friday at midnight, we will have a special surprise for everybody. And please don't forget to tell your friends as well. Thank you and have a nice day.